And so she reached out to me and said, hey, Steve, how could we work together to improve transit in Dufferin Canada, and particularly in Shelburne? We know that there's that gap between Orangeville and Shelburne, and we need people to be able to get to jobs, uh, and so transit obviously is very important. Uh, I met with uh, David Tilson, the MP, Dufferin Calvin, just on Friday. Again, pushing those issues with respect to transit, pushing issues with respect to economic development. Uh, I have a meeting on Monday, tomorrow, in fact, with uh, Michael Thompson. He's the City of Toronto Councillor. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, why am I meeting with the City of Toronto Councillor and we live in the town of Shelburne? Who cares? Well, it's to your point, Trevor. It's about saying to the, the councillor, look, if people come to you and they're looking to invest their dollar and they can't afford to invest in the city of Toronto for whatever reason, let them know that Shelburne welcomes them. So it's about building these partnerships. It's about letting people know that there's an opportunity here and you should seize the opportunity before it escapes you. It's generating an interest. It's generating a buzz. And why that's important? It's important because Instead of taking the transit that we're hoping to get to go to Orangeville, to go to Brampton, to go to Toronto and work, there are jobs here where your son and daughter could work instead of sitting at home and playing video games. There's actually a job for them to go to. So I'm thankful that Domino's just opened, uh, just on Friday, actually. Um, and I went in there by mistake. I went in there on Thursday looking to get a pizza slice, and I was told at the door, listen, come back tomorrow because we're not open. But I was happy to see there were a number of young people preparing the place. That's your son and daughter, my son and daughter, that now has a job that we didn't have available to us before. So we have to continue to mirror and parallel the residential growth with the growth of businesses as well. So what we're talking about right now is sort of getting engaged from the room as to what are some of the ideas that we have that could make Shelburne stronger. And it's about listening to these ideas, listening to each other, and then taking these ideas forward. Now, of course, as a politician, and certainly I'm not going to do this, I watched a lot of television before in the past, I'm not going to fall into this sort of mistake, which is make promises. Am I here to make promises? The only thing I can promise is my effort in listening and in taking the issues to cancel and see what can be done. I'm one man amongst many others that have to listen and vote. And it's a part about building relationships. So even though I'm just one person on council, my job is to build relationships with the mayor and the other council members. So when I put agendas forward, I can get the support and say, hey, listen, you know what? There's enough confidence and there's enough trust in me for them to say, hey, Steve has his, uh, sort of the, his ear to the floor as to what the community is looking for. He's brought forward some valid ideas that will address the concerns of the community. And I'm on board. And so that's what it's about. Um, I'm just going to touch on one of the issues now as I say that. One of the, uh, in the Shelburne newspaper, uh, maybe about uh, a month or so ago, there was uh, an article that talked about, again, this growth in the town of Shelburne, and they referred to the 2016 census that uh, showed not only the growth, but within that growth, the diversity within that growth, that, 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 that growth. Uh, it talked about uh, uh, North American Aboriginals, it talked about uh, South Asians, it talked about uh, Chinese, etc. You name it. They, they outlined the growth. And so there's clearly diversity within the town of Shelburne. So there's a couple ways of dealing with that. One is to say, hey, listen, I don't care. The other way is to say, shoot, I'm afraid of this. Or the other way to look at it is to say, I'm going to embrace it because I believe diversity is good and that we should acknowledge and celebrate our differences. And so when I think about Shelburne Strong Together, I look at it as a place where race and regardless of what cultural background I come from, no matter what place of worship I go to, it doesn't matter in the town of Shelburne. And it shouldn't, right? And this is why coming together and learning about each other and bringing down the barriers and bringing down the things that may concern us once we meet and we greet this is why we went through this exercise because now you start to feel I'm connected to that person and now I'm not as afraid because of views or perceptions or things I may have heard no I know Joe I know Steve and so whatever I've heard before doesn't apply here in the town of Shelburne and that's important to me and I hope it's important to you 
And so one of the things, because it's important, that I brought forward to Council was a motion that we acknowledge and celebrate our diversity. So you may be asking, well, how? So as of 2018, based on the information that has been gathered in the census, based on what we know, just walking through town, just look at the room. Based on what we know and what we see, the town is diverse. So again, what do we do? Either we ignore it or we embrace it. I'm erring on the side of embracing it. So I brought a motion forward uh, before council that we do our best to take a leadership role in acknowledging the diversity in the town. And so I'm happy to let you know that as of January 2018, as we talk about Shelburne stronger together, recognizing and celebrating our diversity, we will be in all of our social media platforms I'm talking about the town, uh, the mayor's newsletter, I'm talking about the big LED sign I believe by the Bear store there, and there will be an ad taken out in the paper celebrating National Aboriginal Day, celebrating Eid, celebrating Diwali, celebrating Caravan, celebrating major cultural festivities that we know resides within the town of Shelburne. You may say, well, why? Why are we doing that? Why? Because we want to acknowledge the diversity that's here. We want to celebrate the diversity that's here. People feel a part of the community when the town demonstrates that they're here and they're celebrating that they're here. And it allows me to get to know you, and you to know me and my background. And knowledge is power. And when you get that information, you see that we're celebrating our differences, that's when you get a true sense of, that, hey, listen, we belong to a true community. A community is not a community, I'm living over here, and you're living over there, and you're afraid to come over there, and we're afraid to come over there. We don't have a community. We're not stronger together, yet that's what we have. So that is a motion I brought forward. Like I said, thankfully that has been carried, and we can start seeing those changes as of January 2018. The other thing, uh, as well, is our schools. Cheers, sir. Schools. There are issues in the schools with bullying, for example, is a big issue. Uh, I don't have children in the schools here in Shelburne that has been brought to my attention over and over again. So again, what do we do? Do you say to yourself, look, it's not my child who cares? Or do we try to do something about it? So I got an email, or we got an email as council about a couple of weeks ago from a parent who said, my children are being bullied I went to the school to address the issue with the child's parents, the person who was actually bullying their children, and the parents started bullying them. So there's now this intimidation. Now the child is, what the lady wrote was that now when she, the, ch the children see not only the person who's doing the bullying, but the parents, when the mother comes to pick up the child, the child's saying, uh, you know, we should run and get her as quickly as possible because I want to get beaten up. Imagine. Schools are a place where we be learning not only academically, but learning about each other. And it's a place of learning. You want to know that when you drop off your child, your child gets on the school bus and goes home, that it's a safe space. Not a space where it's a war zone, and they're looking to avoid minefields. So that's what's happening right now. So I can happily tell you that I spoke to the staff last week, Friday actually. Now this may not be huge in the grand scheme of things, but now we could look forward to seeing links on the town's website with respect to having where to go, having resources of where to go to seek assistance when it comes to dealing with these matters, whether emotionally or otherwise. I mean, there's only really so much the town could do, but that's an initiative that I'm proud to say that is being put forward. The other thing that I'm doing as well is that I've reached out to all the schools within the town of Shelburne. So I actually have meetings with the principals. I actually have one this week with the meeting of uh, the principal of the high school here this week. And so one of the reasons why, or some of the reasons why I've done that is because A, it's one thing to talk about stopping bullying and saying it's all bad. It's another thing to do something about it. And so I met up with them. They have been gracious enough to say, hey, let's see, let's see if we can work together and talk about ways of addressing these issues that we know are in our schools. Again, we can turn a blind eye to it and pretend that it's not there, but it's there. And so we'll be running programs, having speakers come in and trying to address this issue. I'm not saying it's not happening already. I'm not saying I'm inventing the wheel, 
I'm just adding value to what already may be there. And if it's not there, it's going to be there. The other thing that I decided to do and the schools are on board is to, this is all about promoting community. So this is the major, major theme. So as I say this, have that in mind. This is all about promoting community and bringing our community together. So I came up with a couple of awards, one called the Citizen Award. So that's going to be designed to acknowledge those who have newly come to the town of Shelburne, have embraced the community, have gone above and beyond to try to bring the community together, make the community better. Those sorts of individuals we want to recognize. There's also an award called the Councillor Egan Community Service Award uh, in honor of Councillor Egan and his family. So I met with the family, I told them that this is what I wanted to do. They were totally on board. Uh, and this is again to recognize an individual who has gone above and beyond to make the community better. At the end of the day, it's not what we want. I mean, this is the reason why we're here, right? And so those two awards are designed specifically to do that. And you may say, well, what does that have to do with bullying? Well, if we're working together, we're acknowledging that this is important, the goal is that other people are gonna to wanna to get on board, the school's gonna be excited about it, and we're all working together. So does it eliminate it altogether? Maybe not. But if we could turn five bullying cases to one, then we're a success, right? So that's what we're doing. Um, I told you already about building partnerships with those outside of the town of Shelburne. I have a, actually a radio program that I'm going to be attending next Friday. Again, promoting economic development within the town of Shelburne. Um, promoting residential development. All the virtues that we know that Shelburne has, trying to promote that. Some may say, and I can understand, well, the town's growing too fast, and I don't want it to grow that fast. I like it the way it is. It's quaint. It's nice. And some people felt that way and uneasy about the internet when it came in, right? <laughs> it's, they, and I say that not to really make fun of those who have those views. It's, it's here. And we have a couple options. Like I said about the bullying issue or other issues that we have, it's here, and it's going to continue to happen. As you know, there's a sign up by the, I think it's by the beer store that says registration coming soon for the new developments that are coming into town. It's here. Those developments are not going away. More people are coming. So as the gentleman Trevor said before, he left, well, okay, what are we doing to make sure that we have the amenities in place to deal with the population growth? Um, leasing is a big issue. That's, you know, we're doing our police OBP costing, so we've got to make sure we have the enough police officers to deal with the growth and the things that come along with growth as well. But it really all starts with us too. The newcomers that come have to be part of the community, want to be part of the community, reach out to the community, and not just expect that they're going to be entitled to what the town of Shelburne has to offer them. They have a responsibility to the town's success as well. We that are here have a responsibility to those who come as well to extend ourselves and say, hey, listen, welcome to the town of Shelburne. You may not look like me, you may not work with me, you may not even live next door to me, but I welcome you to the town of Shelburne. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was just curious, with, the, with this growth and everything that's happening, is there any discussion in town in regards to the community center expanding the facilities there? Is that uh, that's one of the themes that continuously comes up on all the social media, is, you know, what people are asking. Yeah, I, I, I can't say that there's been formal talks or there's anything in the works to do that. One of the things that uh, I, I was thinking about, and I did have a discussion with the mayor with this, and we'll see what happens with the new development. My view is, if you're going to extend uh, to any developer to come and develop our land in, uh, in, in Shelburne, community centers and facilities like that should be a part of that. Yeah, the parks are, I know. Yeah, but parks, but yeah. talking about centers, actually. Yeah. Uh, hubs within the community that we could use and come together and be that community that we're talking about. So it's not just creating a slide for a two-year-old to go down. That's, it's, it's more than that. It's actually saying, look, if you're going to develop, we're going to allocate a certain amount of space. We'll give you the right to go and do that. But as a part of your development, we expect this. Because we know that this is what we require in the town of Shelburne for a community to be a community. And some other developers in other areas of the GTA, they do do that. Because they're thinking about how do we bring communities together. And these are, so whether they're walking trails, uh, cycling trails, whether they're community hubs, these are the things that are important. So it's not just granting a license to Tim Hortons. It's a great community spot, but we need a little bit more than that. So I'm hoping that with the development that is coming, that has been factored into the equation. But to answer your question directly, whether there are formal talks with respect to expansion, I can't say that there is. I'll look into that. Certainly, uh, that's something that uh, I could probably get back to you on. But 
there certainly has to be more amenities to address the growth, and that's hopefully something that they're going to be doing with the new developments coming in. Anybody have any questions? Yes, Alex. So, um, judging by this meet and greet, are we to assume that you'll be running for election in the upcoming year? <laughs> <laughs> you can't get away from this stuff, right? Um, absolutely. Uh, this is not, I don't foresee this as a one and done. This, I didn't do this as a, some sort of, I was bored and I, this opportunity came and decided just to put my name in the hat and now I've accomplished my goal and I want to move on. This is about the long haul. This is an investment. So you don't, you know, look at this as your investment portfolio. There's, you know, you're in for the long haul. Um, you put your money in and you ride the waves. At the end of the day, you're looking for a return. And so that's what I'm looking for in the town of Shelburne. Like I said, I've been here three years. I have no plans of going anywhere. Uh, certainly being in the position that I'm, I'm in right now, it's a privilege to serve the, the, the residents of Shelburne. And so to answer your question directly, Alex, uh, the assumption is correct. And I'll confirm for you right now and for everybody here that, yes, it's my full intention to, to run again uh, in, in 2018 for sure. Thank you. Any other questions?